Look out! Here comes the second half of our Spider-Man Royale! Just like a streak of light, you all delivered us some fantastic comments, and we found the best of the best. You gotta say I love you back. You're seriously still on this? I wanna hear it. Oh, come on! Really? No. We're moving on. Adam Gregory 3 says, After giving this some thought, I'm gonna side with Toby on this one. He seems to be the underdog so far, but I think he's got the best chances overall due to the fact that he's the most similar to Peter B, except without being depressed. While the other two would be more capable of talking to Miles on his level, the end goal of this scenario is to be a mentor to Miles. And I think Toby is the most equipped for that job. Him being the oldest also makes him the wisest. And while he's technically not the most experienced, it's his experience that I think is going to be the most useful in passing along to Miles. Andrew is lacking in experience, and Tom's more prominent experience is against larger scale threats that Miles hasn't or probably won't have to deal with. And aside from Toby's emo phase in the third movie, he seems to be the most well put together mentally. Andrew's trauma and grief from Gwen's death is likely going to eat at him once she comes into the picture, and Tom has the struggle of losing everything and everyone dear to him, which would be pretty hard to bounce back from. Toby is currently in a better place emotionally, giving him a clear head. I also don't think Toby's lack of technical know-how will matter either. While Peter B tried hacking it at first, they wound up just stealing the computer and letting Penny crack it anyways. While Andrew's not as careless as of No Way Home, he's still probably the most prone to making mistakes of the three, given his track record. He also has a bad reputation of letting people down, and if he's not careful, Miles could end up being the one saying, YOU'RE A FRAUD, SPIDER-MAN! And while Tom may have a similar arc to Miles in the movie, I think that could also come with a drawback of being too relatable to him. With what Tom's going through right now, I could see him thinking he's not fit to be a mentor, especially if Miles would be like looking into a mirror and seeing a part of himself he wasn't proud of. However, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that the Electric Company Spider-Man would kick all of their asses easily. He was the first live-action Spider-Man, and has way better feats in befriending Paul the Gorilla and defeating the Wall. Who's those other spider chumps who will never crawl? Wow, nice argument. Did your husband make it for you? I will grant you, Andrew Garfield is the least experienced, if we're just going off the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Narratively, emotionally, and physically, the one who appears in No Way Home is basically a completely different character though, who was wise enough to relate to the person you're gassing up and give great advice to the other. But you act as if Peter B was a fantastic mentor in his own right. Even he grew as a character because of Miles, giving love a second try with MJ. Toby already being so put together may mean he has less to gain or emotionally invest into Miles. Similar as they may be, Miles isn't Peter. Even if he finds it a little difficult at first, He's nice and noble enough to try and help him. Why would he just stop trying to help him when he sees that their paths are similar? Trauma is of course going to play a part, but all of these characters are going to be seeing an entire world's future in the hands of a person that they have to shape. Tom is not going to give up just because he knows what he needs to hear, it'll be the opposite. He knows what advice Miles needs to hear better than the other two do. I think Adam has a good point about Toby's mentor role in this. While it is good that Tom and Andrew will relate to Miles more, I don't think that makes them great mentors. They'll be friends, which is good, but that'll make it so much harder for them to abandon Miles and let him make his leap of faith. Peter B. Parker didn't really relate to Miles, he was being a teacher to him, and the movie proved to us that by being more of a teacher than a friend, and by truly testing Miles, he's able to come into his own. By befriending Miles, Tom and Andrew will be too hesitant to test Miles, and they don't have very long at all to save the day and go back to their universes. With Tom and Andrew, I think they would let Miles come along to stop the Collider, which will just lead to him being the deadweight of the team, and he'd ultimately be disheartened when he sees that. Even if they eventually win, everyone would go home and Miles would have zero confidence in himself. The leap of faith is something Miles is going to have to go out alone to stand with solidarity. But how is Toby going to accomplish any training to warrant taking that leap in the first place? We both made it a point he's probably going to be the last at teaching him how to swing around. What little experience Andrew has is far more helpful than what Toby has. I know it's going to be hard to teach Miles web flinging like the others, but it's not like he's incapable of doing it. I think Toby could actually teach Miles about some tactics for swinging just fine. Organic webs and man-made webs operate the same, just instead of a button Toby presses, it's more of a feeling. But the tactics are largely the same. Toby already knows that most Peters don't have his organic web thanks to No Way Home, so he'd probably let Miles know that off the bat. If the two need to find Miles a web shooter, I think they'd eventually resort to asking Aunt May what she knows about this universe's Peter, 
and then they'd get a web shooter from her. From there, they'd be able to retrieve the computer alongside all the other Spider-Men, which will make it a breezier process. And it will give Toby a chance to teach Miles how to swing like a spider can. Tom basically went through what Miles did when he was left with nothing. Sure, it wasn't fun for him, but he grew from it. Spider-Man, especially an underdeveloped one, can't do everything. Tom knows this well, especially when he's from a world where superhumans run around. I get Miles' world doesn't in most cases, but Tom leaving Miles behind would be similar to the stronger Avengers handling stuff that he couldn't. While the other two are in the front line of their worlds, in this case, Miles would have gotten himself killed if he didn't learn his lesson before heading to the Collider. It would be in everyone's interest to not let that happen. We're dealing with three geniuses here, but realists too. That's it for Adam's comment, so let's dig on this next one from Dr. Hippo Time. One of my favorite situations you guys have done for sure. But anyways, I'm thinking Andrew's got this. Miles really just needs a friend more than anything in this, and Toby is just a bit too on the older side to really connect with him. Uh-oh. Pretty sure even Peter B is younger than Toby. And Toby can't teach Miles how to use his webs because these are organic, making the chase scene very complicated. Toby just isn't stacking up to Tom or Andrew in these departments. But on the other side, I worry Tom is too inexperienced and too emotional for this. While Andrew's reaction to a new Gwen would be troublesome, so would Tom be for both MJ and May, who either lost their life or forgot him forever. And those two are such recent events that just happened to him, so it's just gonna hurt even more. As for experience, while Tom is fairly independent now, he definitely wasn't for the longest time. Meanwhile, Andrew just doesn't have either of these massive flaws. He's already reached a point where he truly is the amazing Spider-Man, and he's the one who'll help Miles become truly amazing. T Tom is too inexperienced? I... He's got the most, absolutely, taking on the most foes, appearing in the most movies, and said movies giving us the widest variety of opponents and situations. From the rogues galleries that the other two Spideys have faced, to Ant-Man, to Thanos, and of course his own villains like the Vulture and Mysterio. The latter two he took on on his own. As I said in part one, Tom isn't the Spidey who only became independent recently. These films show that he's able to take down foes with or without Iron Man with or without Stark tech in general even. I get it, it's easy to call him the young and experienced one because of his arc, but what's called inexperience in a universe where Ultron and Thanos exist isn't the same as inexperience found in the other's worlds. Finally, you said he only became experienced recently, so what's the problem? Just because his arc reached its end the most recently doesn't mean it didn't reach its end at all. Like, you say yourself that he's Spider-Man now. You say Andrew is too, but say it as something he has over Tom. I really don't understand how he's less experienced at all. There were just more steps to his arc's conclusion as opposed to more steps after his arc's conclusion, which just means that he knows more about learning how to be Spider-Man. Maybe this comment more so means, again, that Andrew's experience is the most applicable to Miles' situation. I'm having my doubts any of them could even train him to beat Thanos if they tried. Tom was shocked that neither universe had Avengers, and while Miles is going to be working with the other spiders across the universe, even in the upcoming film, they aren't going to be as wide or varied as Earth's Mightiest Heroes are. There's not much about other superheroes he needs to understand, the spiders are the only ones who will understand Miles. Oh, Tom couldn't beat Thanos, that was never my point. My point was that my Spidey has the widest experiences to draw from. Working in tandem with other superheroes against foes much stronger than he is in the first Thanos fight, and fighting an entire army are experiences that the other Spideys just don't have. I saw some thinking that, like, I was trying to say that Thanos showed that he's a better fighter or stronger or whatever. No. I think they're all pretty comparable thanks to the latest film. But the fact that Tom has fought most of what the others have and then some likely makes him the hardest to waver and gives him the largest pool of knowledge and experiences to draw from. I already got into why I don't think the web situation is going to matter in the long run for Toby here, since he can still teach Miles how to swing when they get their hands on a web shooter. Even without it, I don't think Toby will handle that chase as poorly as Peter B did to begin with. He'll probably be able to effectively escape while protecting Miles, and I think he can take Octavius in a fight if that comes into play. I'm sure there are areas where they're all going to falter in, but my main point is I think in most areas Andrew's going to excel. He was easily the most enthused about working with the other spiders. Granted, Tom was in an emotional crisis, but this is the same guy who smiled at Iron Man's funeral. Andrew and Miles are around the same age, so while I won't be making any Nazi accusations towards Toby like Dr. Hippo Time was, 
It is true that him wanting a younger brother and having the most experience as a friendly neighborhood hero is really advantageous. One who actually is going to understand what's going on when Miles starts sparking and going invisible. I did make a mistake in part 1 saying he made the cure for Electro, when it was actually Dr. Connors, but his really obscure knowledge on biology and that scene where he has to play with batteries really helps. Oh, and also, apparently his blood is some super cure? And Dennis Leary did say that this was going to be a plot point in the third movie. Part of the discussion was that possibly in 3 there was this idea at one point that uh, Spider-Man would be able to take this formula and regenerate the people in his life that had died. So there was this discussion about that Captain Stacy would come back even bigger in oh, wow. episode 3 and I was like... Oh yeah! What the fuck is this? They were going to regenerate Dr. Stacy even bigger? Could that have been the final showdown of the third Amazing Spider-Man movie? Peter fights off horrible zombies of Dr. Stacy, Gwen, and even Uncle Ben! I love the phrasing that we are specifically going to regenerate him. Not bring him back to life, no 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 no! but use this magic formula to grow the Captain Stacy out of his body. Captain Stacy is the most similar to Miles' dad, so maybe this would help. Andrew will start seeing Miles' dad as a ghost. He'll be following him around forever now. Alright, alright, you guys are shit for not using the TV show Electric Company, Spider-Man. Wow, this is a super close match, and while there is zero doubt in my mind that all three of these Spider-Men can and will succeed, I feel like Tom Holland will be able to do this mission the best. Tom is by far the most technical, creative, and intelligent of the three. In No Way Home, Tom not only outsmarted Doctor Strange, but he also, granted using Stark technology, figured out how to undo Electro's, well, everything. Also cure Doc Ock of his craziness from his arms, as well as create a cure for the Green Goblin. My point with all this is that Tom would have absolutely zero issues making and helping Miles adapt with any new gadgets he may need. Another huge point in Tom's favour is his spidey sense. Yes, all three have it, but Tom's is unique as it can sense mental dangers. Finally, both Max and Brandon bring up that Tom hardly ever was New York's only hero, and to some extent that is true, but I hardly think that, that point is a detriment. Tom has had to deal with numerous villains before, plus he can use that team experience to help teach Miles, the same way that he was in Has Tour. When Tom teamed up with Toby and Andrew, he was the leader. During the Civil War airport scene, he had the idea to tie up Ant-Man. And during the battle with Thanos, he was the one to bring the gauntlet to Captain Marvel. And if you want to count it, an alternate universe Tom Holland leads the remaining humans against the zombies. With all this being said, oh god, please let the combo curse be over. Combo Breaker! I missed you, man! But I'm gonna have to put some dirt in your eye. First off, I'm sorry for ever showing a clip of What If Spider-Man, because it clearly led to you talking about it here. Peter is cringe in that episode. It's nice that Tom can make some gadgets for Miles during this, but when Tom returns to the MCU, he'll lose access to that kind of tech. He'll have some tech from Aunt May, but it isn't nearly as advanced. If Miles grows accustomed to the technology Tom loans him, he'll be lost without it when Tom leaves. Sure, he might let Miles keep some of the tech, but if it ever breaks or has a technical issue, there isn't much Miles can do with it. In fairness, in No Way Home when all three were given the same resources, they were on equal footing back in the lab. Tom has had the most experience with the outlet of Stark Industries, just given that May's Lab and Alchemex are available to all of them, plus Penny, I doubt we're going to have an Iron Man Jr. situation in Miles' universe. Penny and the other spiders are the key. Even if Tom was the one coordinating the other two, they made up pretty quickly and got in the swing of things fast. Working with Gwen, Andrew's going to get the same closure Peter B. did. He is emotional, but anyone would be. I don't think he's gonna be in a comical, overzealous state of panic. He's not a cartoon character. Well, kind of is in this universe, but despite them going into the cartoon world, everyone there, including the pig, could help both him and Miles. Tom has met similar people like Rocket, Iron Man, or even Captain America in the case of Noir, but they aren't the exact same people. Noir's even more of a fish out of water. He was perplexed by a Rubik's Cube. I bet if you offered Steve Rogers one, he'd just hit you with a, no, I don't think I will. Tom being the least like a typical Spider-Man with his universe means he'll relate to them the least. In the lab, Toby could only really work on a cure for Goblin, since he'd been thinking about it for a while. Andrew is for sure smart, but he didn't make as many cures as Tom did. And without evidence of him being able to do so, I think it's safe to say that Tom is still the best in that regard. Combo is also right that Tom's spider sense is the most multifaceted compared to the others. I'm not sure if it could detect Miles' emotional state across the city, however I do think that it would be able to detect Dog Ock being evil before she shows off her tentacles. 
I can agree that Toby is the least tech savvy. But he really doesn't need to be in this scenario. Can't hack the computer? Okay, just take the computer itself like Peter B. Parker did. When they eventually meet up with the other spiders, they can handle it. Toby doesn't need to be a tech whiz to mentor Miles. Buddy, if this guy can't even deliver a pizza in 28 minutes, how is he supposed to carry a whole PC? Back on Holland, he's had to deal with the most villains, but in every movie he just keeps digging himself deeper and deeper into a rabbit hole. Tom doesn't know how to stay out of trouble. Sure, Andrew can get a little messy and Toby makes mistakes too, but neither have straight up become public enemy number one. Tom has had his whole identity leaked. Toby only did that to some people on the train who promised to keep his identity safe. I guarantee if the others went against Mysterio, they would fall for that trick too. That's less so a testament to Tom being gullible, and more so Mysterio being the pettiest villain ever conceived. Who also doesn't shower. FIRE ALL THE DRONES! No! Low F Fort says, They'd all do fine, so this is really a question of nuance. This is judging by how much better off Miles would be under their short care. Who can ultimately impart the most meaningful wisdom in the least amount of time? While providing Miles with friendship and better tech is nice, a lot of Holland's struggles are because of his incredibly powerful tech. It was an easy solution that made him make a lot of mistakes. Plus, Miles ultimately will be left with Aunt May as tech support, so it's not that big of a deal to have tech under your belt. Being better friends would make it easier for Miles to trust you, but not only is gaining Miles' trust not a huge issue for any of the Spider-Men, but if they're gonna disappear like in Spider-Verse, it won't matter. A friend you relied on to solve your problems going away means you're going to be back where you started. Lessons in teamwork aren't really gonna matter since Miles is gonna be patrolling the streets of New York solo. That's why I'm going with Toby, who's unanimously agreed to be the wisest by a fair margin. Context is also crucial in the debate of nuance. This is a competition, but none of the other Spider-Men know that. I think Tom being so capable would ultimately mean he'd just solve the multiverse problem by himself. He'd treat Miles the same way he did to his dear friends in No Way Home, which is the most recent thing he's done, by the way. Betray his friends' consent and abandon them by letting them forget him. For their own good, in his mind at least. That doesn't bode well for Miles. If Holland wasn't explicitly told that this was a competition of mentoring, he wouldn't be that compelled to teach Miles much. Garfield and Maguire clearly have more desire to mentor, but Maguire being the wiser one leaves him the winner. Plus, both Miles and Toby are unique to the other Spider-Verse Spider-Men in that their powers are innately biological and mentally based. So, even if Garfield could understand the symptoms of Miles' power of research, it would be a very roundabout and thus longer way of getting to the conclusion that Toby would start at, being in the right mentality to use your powers. Think about my argument this way. Would Spider-Man be better off if Uncle Ben hadn't said the famous line, if he had instead left him an Iron Man suit, if Uncle Ben was instead Peter's best friend? All of Spider-Man's heroics, his morality, his legacy came about because he was left that single line of wisdom. With great power comes great responsibility. Toby would impart way more wisdom than just a single line, and make Uncle Ben incredibly proud. Mentoring is about teaching self-sufficiency, to be able to learn on their own, and to help people realize their full potential. While it's certainly nice if your mentor has a lot of material goods, or if you can get along with them, you ultimately want a mentor who can teach the best and teach the most. That's something I hadn't even considered! Toby having biological webs will actually help him teach Miles about his more biological powers like electricity and invisibility. In Spider-Verse, the powers were tied to his emotions, which is the same deal with Toby. He lost all of his powers because of an existential crisis, and had to rebuild himself to get his powers back. This could really help him understand what Miles has to do in order to get his powers working. So, this sort of counters what Brandon said earlier about Toby not having any bonuses in this. If anything, my bonus overrides Andrew's! Those examples are not the same. In nature, spiders do not weave webs from their wrists. If he wanted to truly be biologically accurate, he'd be shooting him out of his abdomen. But Andrew knew how some really obscure fish acted in nature in their natural biology, as well as learning how insulators conduct and store electrons. Toby can teach him how to swing, but not only can Andrew teach him how to swing more creatively, but he can show Miles how to use his powers more akin to the ultimate Spider-Man in the comics. There's nothing biologically accurate about this at all! Spiders can't turn invisible or shoot electricity! This is comic bullshit, so I don't think that matters too much. Their powers activate the same way, through strong emotions. Toby straight up knows what it feels like to be aware of his powers and have to slowly regain them, since that's what went down in Spider-Man 2. He recognized it as a midlife crisis in No Way Home, so he knows that that kind of stuff is tied to your emotions. Miles also only activated his powers when he was emotional, 
So Toby does have the key to that power. But animals in nature, including fish, can. Or more on the nose, lizards. Who has more experience with lizards? A whole city of people being turned into lizards? Although the big sticking point of this comment aren't the webs, but the ideologies of them as mentors. In which, maybe Tom taking after both Andrew and Toby would just make his mantras diet versions of theirs. Maybe I was selling Toby a bit short. He did have a web block. But he doesn't have all that much experience seeing someone else use electric powers. In a weird way, his fewer villains are tailored to help him teach Miles creative ways to use his abilities, not just activating them. An electric blast is going to come in way more handy than a shoulder touch. You say you wouldn't mentor Miles because he didn't with the other two, but like, they didn't need mentoring. Miles is very clearly in need of help. Why would he want to leave this world without Spider-Man? Also, it was mentioned in one of the previous comments that Miles would be left without tech when Tom leaves, but this comment actually mentions how tech-savvy Aunt May is who Tom would likely be able to teach to make this stuff. Heck, why couldn't he just teach Miles? But yeah, saying Tom would go off on his own to solve the multiverse problem is a little unfounded, given that he's willingly teamed up with other Spideys to stop problems in the past. The difference here is that Miles is in need of teaching. Toby and Andrew, for one, clearly weren't. But also, Tom had just had his aunt murdered in front of him, so his priorities were understandably elsewhere. These are very different situations that you just can't directly compare to one another. I'll be honest, this not being a competition kind of makes this a debate to begin with. If all three knew what was going on, they wouldn't make it one. They'd just help each other out again. You have something different to gain from each of them. It would be hard to keep track of three, actually four, with Noir running around. I am you, and you are me. And this is a gun. Now, now, you two. It's rude to point. Wait, no, you're the one pointing. Look, look at your finger right there. Maybe you can tell we've run out of things to say. Great comment, though. On to studio. The visual glow up is spectacular. Good job to the video editors. Neat upgrade to say. Sorry for the upcoming thesis. Thank you. Refer to Max's site as Garf- Okay, yeah, this comment completely shits the bed, considering you refer to Toby Maguire as Garfield. But... I will not bite the hand that feeds me. In my pursuit to see which Spider-Man can do the best and go the distance, not one of them can be claimed to be a failure, due to their struggles and abilities. Unfortunately, too many people are disregarding Brando and Andrew, when in reality, their arguments are amazing. Regarding everything, I haven't seen the Miles mo I really know how to pick my battles, huh? But the main gist is a harsh and close death, another death, and stopping Kingpin and his plan, whilst dealing with other Spider-Men, and woman, and pig. It's not like options are completely sparse, given the scenario. As such, Miles needs someone he could see himself in. And in a short enough time frame, that's what the point of the mirror scene is assessing, taking up the power and responsibility that follows. Tom and Garfield are nice people, sure, but they've got a lot on their plates. Everyone as a contestant has to deal with school, but Andrew's the only one without going to a dealership, to arrange team meetings with others, or anything like that. The other two are a bit out of their league when regards to what Andrew can bring to the field. Tom's lack of solo experience and reliance on his advanced arsenal makes me think he cannot reliably win compared to the other two, as for Garfield, the Venom suit is a negative and harmful, and lacks the necessary groundedness that the other two offer. Nor would he be able to power beyond the death of a loved one, and know the right thing to say to Miles. Look, Andrew's not perfect, no Spider-Man is, yet they're still amazing, and it's because they're tough throughout all odds. Thus, while Tom has the future tech to help him out, and Garfield the experience and wisdom to push through, I'm siding with the supposed black sheep of the series to take the victory, as the other two can only marvel at it. Garfield? I was going for Maguire, dude! I'm gonna immediately discount this comment for that and the Alex Yeek profile picture. Maybe he just wants the cat to be in all this. Miles did learn from another chubby pizza-eating guy, so there's a chance. You haven't seen Spider-Verse? What are you doing watching our shit? Go watch that instead, it's fantastic! You mentioned that Toby would have a lot in his mind, but I don't think that's true. Tom and Andrew are going to have much more in their minds than Toby will. Tom has to face nearly glitching out of the universe, which will no doubt make him the most anxious considering he's had to deal with that before. And Andrew will have to deal with seeing Gwen again, which will take an emotional toll. Toby doesn't have that issue. How would school interfere with any of these characters? They're in another universe now. Plus, call it a hunch, but I doubt Tom went to university after the latest film. I never thought I'd see an argument saying that Tom's tech is too advanced to win. Like, I think I get what you mean, but, but it just kind of sounds like you're saying Tom having an arsenal makes him lose. 
Also, again, Tom is not inexperienced. He is the opposite of that definition. Making mistakes doesn't mean that his inexperience is void. You can't tell me with a straight face that the other Spideys never made mistakes when learning. These learning experiences are not black and white. This debate is in color. Oh, oh, in the Venom suit? When did I bring that shit into my debate? I wouldn't dare let that shitty Venom plotline from Spider-Man 3 seep into the Spider-Verse. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gross. Oh, I'm glad the Venom suit's not in all of this. That guy is literally a living nightmare. Despite some confusion with the scenario, clearly, I do think Andrew is the one who can emotionally respond to Miles the best. That much is true. While partaking in a lot of his interests, yeah, they're working on a ticking clock, but being Spider-Man can suck. If he sees that with this job, you're still allowed to play basketball or skateboard or buy milk and all that stuff. There's still fun that comes with being the wall crawler, albeit with great power and great responsibility, no matter how horribly Ben butchered it. He believed that, that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. Andrew, you're a fucking liar telling Tom you heard the quote from Uncle Ben. That is just not what he said at all. But if he's willing to twist the truth to help this kid, what's helping another, right? Really keeping the spider theme going and talking out of his ass. Speaking of lying, Biffweed! <laughs> the two points that are sticking with me, I, I'm not, I don't worry about The two key points that are sticking with me are who can best mentor and befriend Miles, and who can help him master his powers the best. In the latter's case, I actually think Andrew is the worst off in that regard, since he's the only one who's never had to deal with losing his powers. Brandon does bring up the Electro Cure in No Way Home, and his knowledge on biology, but knowing how Miles' powers work does not translate to him being able to know how to use them properly. Neither does knowing how to siphon electric powers out of somebody, but even then, Andrew wasn't the one who made Electro's Cure, that's Tom. I'd argue Tom's biological knowledge will be even greater than Andrew's, given that he made the cure for all five villains in No Way Home. As a mentor, Tom already has experience working on a team compared to the others who have always gone solo, outside of one fight in Toby's case. Which ended with Harry dying anyway, so take the fat L, Toby Maguire. Like was said in the video, Tom has led the other two Spideys and kept them coordinated in the final battle in No Way Home. As a friend, Andrew mentioned in No Way Home how bitter and lonely he'd gotten. While Tom still had Ned and MJ around for a lot of his time as Spidey, to keep his social life about as active as it gets for Spider-Man. Which isn't much, but again, the others had said in No Way Home that they just don't have much time for Peter Parker stuff anymore. Thank you for the tip, Biffy. Thank you very much. I know mastering his powers is not really going to be something that he can accomplish in just a day, but you're underselling how much experience Andrew has with electricity. Tom made a cure to siphon his powers, but that's because he had a Stark reactor lying around. Tom won't be able to make one or even use one with Miles. The knowledge on biology more so comes into play with invisibility or camouflaging like a lizard. Even if he's never lost his powers, Given his knowledge on nature, it should be pretty evident that there's an emotional response going on. And I mean, in nature, camouflaging is an emotional response to fear of predators. Peter B got shocked by Miles, as well as Andrew and the other two. But who's gonna know what to do when Miles accidentally starts tasing people? I do think it's worth noting that, according to No Way Home, Toby actually did manage to make things work with MJ, and is seemingly keeping his social life together in more modern times. I guess he got a better grip of things as life went on for him. But yeah, socially, I don't think Toby will do too bad. He is right that Tom is the most used to working in a team and is generally the most coordinated. And while Andrew is knowledgeable on biology, there's nothing really pointing towards Miles' newfound skills working the same way that eels or lizards do or anything like that. They work like spiders do, a type of spider that very well might not even exist in Andrew's world. And yeah, Andrew is the only one with no experience in getting spiders' powers working again. Albeit, they got different ones working than the electric one, so maybe this isn't a huge factor, but I'd argue different spider people's powers are more comparable than electric eels and fish knowledge. This may be leaning into headcanon, but I can imagine these being problems the other spiders have had to deal with. They aren't going at this alone. If we're going to look at the source material as our only other reference for them, then I think there might be a problem with Tom being too similar to Miles in the comics. In the Ultimate Spider-Man series, he's just like Tom Holland, even having a nerdy best friend who's a stand-in for Ned Leeds, named Lee, and Peter Parker being his Iron Man. Like, no, literally, Homecoming was based off these Miles Morales comics more than any actual Spider-Man comic. Problem is, a lot of people see this as an inferior version of Miles. 
In Spider-Verse, Miles comes into his own by himself. But this Miles is too reliant on Spider-Man and lives in his shadow, much like how Tom was early on. If Miles was being mentored by his comic counterpart version, then this would make sense. But just like how every adaptation of Peter Parker's story gives us a different character in the end, the same applies to Miles Morales' stories. It's not like Miles in the comics is some horrible version of Spider-Man who sucks at his job. Unlike comic Peter, Tom knows to not become over-reliant on others. I'd say taking down Mysterio shows that he's learned to take foes on himself without Iron Man being, well, alive. I do miss him though. Tony used to eat cheeseburgers. Yeah, admittedly Miles' roommate is the least touched upon part of Spider-Verse. Maybe he would be as Ned, although I don't see him becoming the CEO of sex. Do you guys think MCU Ned will become Hobgoblin? Do you think that would be fucking hilarious? Ned is a contender for like the least intimidating human ever devised, so yes, I would like them to try and make him a badass scary villain. For what it's worth, I still believe Andrew will be the best at keeping Miles' mental health afloat, caring for Miles just as much as Spider-Man. I think this is where he'll excel. I love all three characters here, but this is the balancing act that comes with writing a good Spider-Man story. Unlike other superheroes, Spider-Man's a little different. The Hulk is interesting because of the sheer power fantasy that comes with him, Batman is interesting because of the guise and mystique around his persona, but unlike Bruce Banner or Bruce Wayne, Spider-Man is just as interesting as Peter Parker. Not to sell the other two short, I love them, but you get what I mean. So when it comes to Miles Morales himself, who will leave him the best off, and can mentor him in the most important avenues of becoming Spider-Man? Okay, well, it's probably not Andrew Garfield. Ah, th wait, Brandon, we haven't even gotten that far into this. You're immediately giving up? Look, I'm glad there were things to at least talk about with the Amazing Spider-Man movies, but the more I thought about this debate, the more I realized that while he shares qualities with these two, he doesn't necessarily excel in any major areas, which I mentioned was the linchpin for him winning, and is just the least experienced and the most reckless. I did just say seconds ago he would keep Miles in the best shape mentally, but it's not like the other two are completely lacking in these qualities. And that's the thing, in any areas where Andrew's taking W's, the others aren't lacking, but in any areas where the others are excelling, Andrew just falls behind tremendously. He's a sweet, charming, handsome guy. What was I saying? But my main point was, while I argued he could teach Miles how to use his powers the best, and that he had the most experience being a friendly neighborhood hero, while not one-to-one, -one, I do think Andrew would be privy to understanding what's going on, but so would the other two. But thinking on it more, there isn't much biological basis for his powers that are more so corresponding to how he's feeling. And while I'm sure he could resonate well with Miles and partake in his interests, we aren't playing with a lot of time here. His lack of experience is going to make things cluttered for sure. His reckless behavior, if passed on to Miles, is going to make him make mistakes. And he overall is just kind of sloppy. I mentioned that Tom's identity got leaked, but this is the guy who put his name on his camera and let the lizard find it. It's always fun to play devil's advocate, but realistically, while all of them would do well, the other two I can see excelling in other areas, and at least matching Andrew in a lot of his strong points. We seriously had to consider everything for these guys, mentorship versus friendship, a large swath of experience versus one that closer matches Miles. But this more so became a discussion of Toby versus Tom, and in each of these discussions, when Andrew was brought up, he just kept coming up short. Ah, uh, sorry Brandon, but you fought valiantly. I will return the I love you. You put up a great debate. So this ultimately came down to Toby and Tom, and we discussed this for a good few hours before eventually deciding the winner would be... Tom Holland. <laughs> Pretty unfortunate for me, but I can at least take solace in knowing that it was incredibly close. Both Toby and Tom had a lot of advantages and disadvantages, and it was hard to determine which advantages mattered the most here. We ultimately decided that the biggest determining factor was that Toby would leave Miles as a more traditional by the book Spider-Man, while Tom Holland would inspire Miles to be more of his own unique Spider-Man. It didn't hurt that Tom would actually be able to hold conversations with Miles. Toby is notoriously awkward when it comes to some of his dialogue in the Raimi films. Punch me, I bleed. But Toby wouldn't have come so far if he didn't have advantages of his own. His natural web sounded like a disadvantage at the start, but I think we were able to spin it into a strong advantage, since it means that Toby would be the best at teaching Miles how to use his electricity and invisibility powers. I did initially think that Toby being the oldest made him the most mature and experienced, but Tom was the one who sacrificed literally everything. 
So he's probably the actual most mature spider here. With that, and the fact that Tom actually had a mentor in the past that he can draw from when he's mentoring Miles, makes me slightly edge it out to him. Okay, so I know it's easy to look at Tom and assume that he's the weakest here given that he had help on his journey, but that's just it. Miles also has help, a luxury that any Spider-Man would love. And because of his previous mentorship and being the most overall similar to Miles, it means that he has received the advice that would click with him the most. There's a point in Spider-Verse where he had to be left behind due to a lack of experience, which Tom actually had happened to him. This means he'd likely do it. He'll care about Miles too much by this point to put him in any more danger, especially if he sees himself in him. A big issue that came up in this debate was figuring out which factors really helped Miles the most. Because the movie is super good, it doesn't give us a clear answer. As one of the comments said, there's a lot of nuance here. As such, we had to try and figure out what the most important factors were. This spanned a conversation that was well over an hour long. But eventually, this search led us to arguably the most important scene in the movie. What ultimately decided this was looking at the quotes that played during the Leap of Faith scene in Spider-Verse, since those naturally reflect what inspire him to take that Leap of Faith the best. While most of the quotes were pretty unanimous, there was one that stood out. Now see this, this spark in you, it's, it's amazing. Whatever you choose to do with it, you'll be great. This is important because Tom is the Spider-Man who best understands that being your own hero is important. There is no textbook definition of Spider-Man. What will Miles make that definition? Who knows? It's a leap of faith. Helps that Tom is the most tech-savvy and will be the overall best at resonating with the other Spider-People. Plus, he is easily the most experienced, taking on the widest variety of threats and dealing with the most in general. All of these experiences may leave him with the least to go back for, but even if Tom is scared to go back, Miles will reassure him that he has to go back. Even if his world doesn't need a Spider-Man, every world could sure use one. This was absolutely our closest debate so far, with me and Max in particular bouncing points off each other for a stupidly long period of time. It even reached the point where it felt too even to ever call. But when it came down to the wire, or I guess Spiderweb, a conclusion was finally reached. The draw of this episode wasn't just getting to talk about Amazing Spider-Man, believe it or not but really just the character and the mythos itself. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero ever, and Spider-Verse is going to remain Marvel's magnum opus. I grew up on a lot of Spider-Man material, and I think the Sam Raimi movies have meant the most to me. So I was very happy to talk about them here, and I'm glad this match was at least incredibly close. For Toby and Tom, I'm sorry, Andrew. Spider-Man has, for as long as I can remember, been my favorite superhero. He's got a fantastic design, super relatable and touching stories, cool power set, and it's just all around a likeable character. He's one of the greatest of all time if you ask me. I am so glad that I was able to debate for even one version of this timeless character. Thank you, Stanley, for everything. Now let's see how the other two fucked up! So, let's do this one last time. Across the Spider-Verse, three new Spider-Men were born, taking leaps of faith with newly instilled knowledge of heroes past, these cinematic Spider-Man would say goodbye to their teams, leaving Miles New York's sole defender. Their ideals, skills, and experiences molded each version of Miles in different aspects, making him better suited in some areas more than others. And while all Peters were left satisfied that the experience with the Super Collider came to a close, like a web coming unraveled, the cracks in their words of wisdom started to show, upon Miles taking on New York alone. Starting with Andrew, he and Miles got along like a house on fire, Miles in his world ended up with the most devil may care attitude. He greeted every situation with a smile, and said what's up to any form of danger. While he was truly a friendly neighborhood hero, he was also reckless and brash. It took a bit longer for him to start learning when to pull his punches, but still, a great hero, albeit one who stumbled a bit after Andrew was no longer there to hold his hand. Toby naturally had a lot of knowledge he could impart onto Miles. He was someone he could look up to and learn a lot from but not someone he necessarily wanted to be. Anytime Miles faltered, he just thought of Toby, wondering what he would do in these situations. That is to say, he thought he had to do almost everything by the books. This made him a great hero due to Toby's vast knowledge, but gave Miles very little room to grow and do his own thing. Then there was Tom, and instantly the two clicked. Miles was so invested hearing all the great journeys he went through as Spider-Man with other superheroes, and wanted to be just like him. Tom thought back on his time with Mr. Stark, and knew exactly what Miles needed to hear, albeit at arm's length. 
because Tom was the one who succeeded at crafting the best Spider-Man by letting Miles reinvent the hero on his own and take the leap of faith. Anyone can wear the mask, but Tom knew Miles had a gift. Working with someone who was his equal in all areas but experience, his world ended up with a hero as quick-witted as the one in Andrew's and as smart as the one in Toby's. But he didn't need to be compared in order for others to see how he turned out. He wasn't just another wall crawler. He was the one and only Miles Morales. So look out, here comes the Spider-Man. We interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog Show, starring Courage the Cowardly Dog. Abandoned as a pup, he was found by Muriel, who lives in the middle of nowhere with her husband, Eustace Bay. Yeah. But creepy stuff happens in nowhere. <laughs> 